Hi, I'm Paul Heimosh from Yamaha Guitar Group. Now, I'm usually associated with Line 6 gear, but recently I was lucky enough to be presented with my very own custom shop Yamaha Pacifica. I was fortunate enough to be able to work with senior designer and luthier Pat Campolitano on the design, build and spec of this, my very own perfect guitar. And as if that wasn't enough, I also had the opportunity to visit the Yamaha facilities in Hamamatsu and in Tokyo which is a chance to see in person the long journey that the company has been on before arriving at the guitar that I now hold in my hands. And of course, we brought cameras and pretty much filmed everything. First off, we're going to visit Innovation Road, which is Yamaha's amazing museum in Hamamatsu. Then in part two, we'll head over to the guitar archive and see if we can dig out some interesting guitars to play. This is my first time in Japan and hopefully not my last. It's a wonderful and colourful place. Every little thing seems to be completely different from what I'm used to in the UK. Innovation Road is an incredible journey through Yamaha's musical history. It's a real eye-opener to see just how many Yamaha products have impacted on my life as a musician. I had no idea that Yamaha were putting wood in cars. So this is the sort of thing that I'm really interested in because this is the first production Yamaha electric guitar. And I think the design of this is so cool and so bold and it takes in a lot of that sort of the, the American influence of the surf type of guitars. This one I find really interesting as well. So this is from 1968. So this is taking on the, the hollow body influence that was coming from the Beatles and, and bands like that, but still maintaining that, that really bold design idea. The Yamaha has such a wonderful history and, of, uh, and such a long history of creating really, really interesting guitars. As well as being high quality and all the normal things you would associate with Yamaha, you're also looking at some really interesting designs. And then you have things like the SG2000. So this was really the, the, the Yamaha electric guitar that put Yamaha on the map as not merely reproducing American style, American style guitars, but actually coming up with their own thing. And, Certainly for me as a guitar player, starting out and listening to bands like Duran Duran and stuff, the guitar player from Duran Duran used to use one of those. This is made for San, uh, Carlos Santana, so this would be one of the very, very first of the, what later became the SG2000. So this guitar here is one of my favourite sort of Revstar designs. I love the colour on this, I love the scratch plate on this as well. So this guitar in particular was a massive inspiration for when I designed my own yeah, Yamaha Pacific guitar. But this design concept that they had at the Cafe Racer with the motorbike idea and that stripped back look was really where the whole thing for my Yamaha Pacifica came from. And then obviously Yamaha do some amazing bass stuff as well, so things like the BV bass, BV2000 from 1978. So I used to see those basses on top of the pops all the way through the 80s and some classic recordings. Like walking around here brings back so many memories of Yamaha products being in my life that I hadn't, I had, I'd forgotten all about. SPX90, being, a, being at music college in the, the late 80s. Originally I had one of these as well, this DD10. Things where you just forget how, how much of an influence that Yamaha have had, not only on, on music in general, but actually on me.
when these guitars came out, they've got the nickname The Flying Samurai. They reissued this guitar in the late 90s, early 2000s. And, uh, and I had one of those very, very briefly that I did a bunch of video stuff with. Just a really unusual design. And actually really comfortable when you sit there with that guitar. The weight of it's really nice. But I've never, ever seen one of the basses before. That's my, my first time seeing one of those. And then you have things like the Pacifica 912. That's the very, very first sort of production model of the, of the Pacifica. And I sold so many of those guitars. And then, like I said before, taking the Revstar and then blending it with that. And, uh, and that's where my guitar came from. A multi-effect pedal from 1983. That's got to be one of the very first ones. I think when I first got into recording in the early 90s, I guess, early 90s, I had something almost identical to that. So that's what started me on the journey of recording music. True story. <laughs> so I remember selling these in music stores, and I'm a little bit horrified to see that the date on that is 1998, so that more than anything else has made me feel really, really old. <laughs> that's a bit depressing, actually. potentially could steal my job because it actually has a demo button on that guitar. And then this as well, the silent guitars that Yamaha do, it's just, a, again, another really bold design. I like the way that Yamaha are always prepared to sort of do something completely different, completely different forward thinking as well. Look at that. This is a Revstar with a metal casing on the front, on the top. 2017 for the Tokyo Motor Show. If you want to visit Innovation Road yourself or just learn more about it, head over to Yamaha.com. So join us in part two where I'll have the chance to hunt around Yamaha's guitar archive, looking for the classic and often eccentric guitars throughout their long history. The prototypes that grew is something we all recognise and possibly of even more interest to me, the prototypes that never quite made it into production.